Okay, Orbit 16-0606-158, Wilcox ascending left. Checking. Well, we have 16-12-0-0, pretty close. And those calls from NASA astronaut Sonny Williams to the ground discussing a variety of coordinates should a landing need to take place. We are not tracking anything like that, but this is all part of that certification process. Again, as part of these checkouts, you might hear the call bad SIGI or SIGI in recovery mode. That SIGI is the Space Integrated GPS Inertial Navigation System, essentially the GPS that Starliner utilizes to track its location. So as part of these manual piloting checkouts, NASA astronauts Butch Wilmore and Sonny Williams will put Starliner through its paces to ensure that they could recover should something have gone wrong with that SIGI system. Again, this is all part of the certification process of the Boeing Starliner spacecraft. The Starliner saw the RHC caution go into and out of alarm. Look, transient looks like you're still flying. Uh, no action, obviously. Just continue to fly. We're taking a look at it. Okay, yeah, we're, we're in our first attitude now. Roger. And the crew is in a day pass at this time uh, as they perform that hold for 15 minutes. This is just to have the ideal configuration to assess that power generation in this process. Okay, hey Butch, we've got the uh, attitude bias in on SIGI 1, so we're ready for uh, you to check on step 2, decimal 2, decimal 2. 2.2.2, two, two, two. here we go. During this phase of the um, manual flight test demonstration, uh, Mission Control uploaded Mission Control uploaded a uh, update to the uh, internal estimate on one of the SIGIs, um, specifically the... All right, here we go, inhibiting uh, SIGI 2 and SIGI 3. We're ready. The inertial navigation system... Um, Mission Control sent an update to the uh, Inertia Navigation System 1 on SIGI-1 um, to change its estimate to be something worse than normal. What Butch is going to do is only use that single SIGI. With Mission Control sending a bad estimate of Starliner's attitude on purpose to the Inertia Navigation System, Butch is going to take over manual control and orient Starliner to point at the stars to then update that value uh, to go back into normal range. He's utilizing out-of-the-window cues to fly Starliner given uh, the prior checkouts that took place with the SIGI system.
and you do see this graphic on your screen there of some of those uh, simulated thruster firings. We do not have video of the Starliner spacecraft live right now, but this is a pretty good simulation that shows you what is happening with the spacecraft. Those are the RCS thrusters, or the reaction and control thrusters. There are 28 of those on Starliner in all. Each creates about 100 pounds of thrust and really do fine adjustments of the spacecraft as part of this uh, manual uh, far field piloting checkout. There are also OMAC, or Orbital Maneuvering and Control Engines, on Starliner. There's 20 of those in all, and each of those produces about 1,500 pounds of thrust and are used for those bigger burns um, when more um, large adjustments are needed in the trajectory. And on this graphic here on your screen, you are seeing the Starliner spacecraft. Um, again, we do not have live views of the spacecraft at this time, but we uh, will hopefully get some great views tomorrow uh, ahead of docking. Again, that docking at 11.15 a.m. Central Time. You can see that Starliner's nose cone is open. It will remain open all the way through the docking portion as there is some important navigation and guidance equipment underneath of that nose cone. NASA astronaut Butch Wilmore and Sonny Williams continue to perform the manual targeted translation burn maneuvers. And next up, they'll work to evaluate charging the batteries of the Starliner spacecraft by flying in a tail to sun attitude. Again, these are all just a part of the checkouts ahead of certification uh, if needed for any reason. While the spacecraft is a uh, mainly autonomous vehicle, it's important to have the certification of these capabilities if required. Okay, here comes Trans Auto. And Houston uh, T Guide Trans, there it goes, it just go out, 3402. All right, going back to Transpol. All right, yeah, we're ready for that, and we're ready for you to do uh, step four, decimal four. And on your screen, you're continuing to see this animation of the Starliner spacecraft as those far field piloting checkouts continue. NASA astronaut and commander of Starliner, Butch Wilmore, is manually flying Starliner right now using the RCS or reaction control system thrusters in order to have short bursts of firings as part of that targeted translation burn checkout. In all there are 28 RCS thrusters each with about a hundred pounds of thrust and these uh, that, uh, marker pin is uh, location is belaying us. Uh, might you have a quick call for where it would be? Stand by. We'll get it. Thank you. 
And the next checkout that we'll look ahead towards is the evaluation of charging the batteries by flying tail to sun. This ensures that Starliner can have its batteries charged uh, with the solar arrays. Uh, two options for you, toolkit or contingency bag. Both of them have the, the marker. Yeah, we found markers. They've got Sharpies. I don't think we want that one. And then we got a grease pencil. Is that it? Yeah, grease pencil. And at this time, Starliner is now in that tail to sun orientation.
All right, Houston, we had the sun in the overhead window. Now we're pitching 160 degrees, uh, putting on our tail. Roger. 